All right, so we're going to talk about the deaths surrounding Chuck's life. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm guessing the first one that I would think would be Louis, his father. He said he died of a heart attack, uh, and Sylvia, his mother, had, was a, a retail associate, maybe a manager at the, the local department store. I think it was um, a Beals or something like that. Anyway, I used to go, and she had this thing for pearls and brooches. So I never, uh, the pearls were behind the counter if they had any, or I don't, rem I don't remember if they had any or not. But if they had some, they were definitely behind the counter. But they had the brooches out on the floor. So if everyone would go and sell, I'd sneak and hide it, stick it on the bottom of the pile. So she would get a brooch if she liked it. But um, Sylvia didn't die until like 05-ish. She died of lung cancer. But she smoked in the house because they didn't know back then. And Chuck, I think, always blamed her for that because he had. She said he had throat cancer or something. Uh, so he he doesn't like smoking. Like I care. Um, he said he had a childhood sweetheart that somebody you know did bad things to her and then killed her. Like. It just sounded really weird the way he said it, and I was just like. Then he said he had a bunch of friends who tried to outrun a train and they all died in a car accident. So Chuck, although I don't think he was an alcoholic, he did drink a lot in college, but it wasn't constantly. It was, I know from Mardi Gras he would drink a lot. Um, I was terrified to get into the car with him when he would drive. Uh, and was always across the damn bridge. I hated the bridge. I was terrified of the bridge. I would pray the whole freaking time, stare out the window at any indication that we were going to go over the freaking, uh, whatever, guardrail. Terrified. When Chuck graduated law school, we moved to New Orleans for a year. We lived on Magazine Street in a yellow duplex. We lived on the top floor. The couple lived on, the, another couple lived on the bottom floor. Uh, I, that was when I was... For one year, went to Sacred Heart Academy. I think it was pre-pre-K or something. I don't know, pre-K, whatever. Tanya Isabel Baker was in my class. Uh, child of Bob and Elsa Baker. Two older sisters, Christina and Adela Baker. Cuban, supposedly. Cuban. They had Sousa, was their maid, chef, caretaker, housekeeper, whatever. So I think the people below us died while we were there, he would, the guy uh, broke his foot or something, leg, I don't know what, he had crutches and he would let us swing on the crutches, but he was, I mean, I, we were, I was teeny, and he was an adult, so he was super tall to me, but it was fun to swing, it was a little scary because it can, it was like a whole me b below me, at least one. Um, I, and that was when we went to the little AMP, there was an AMP or some sort of convenience store in the corner there, not too far from where we lived. And that's where Tita wouldn't get out of the car and get my freaking whoopee. I saw some adult running down the street with it. <sighs> Crazy. Um, and that's when, like, I can't remember the first time I realized he would say something that just happened to me, but he would say it like it just happened to him. And I didn't know what to say to that because it was so weird. Because the first time I think I said, I said, well, that just happened to me too. Or something very similar that just happened to me or something and I don't remember what happened when I said that to him but then I realized it didn't happen to him it happened to me but he's saying that it happened to him and it's just the weirdest thing you, you stare right in his eyes and he acts like it happened to him and he cries but he's up he's not really crying I don't know it's just so weird um So I, well, this is back to college. I applied early acceptance, or early admittance to LSU to skip my last semester of high school and just go to school early. Um, I got a phone call from someone who I knew sounded like Chuck's secretary, Linda, who said I was not accepted to the program, but I, I could go in the fall, regular acceptance. I was accepted regular acceptance, just not early. So come fall when I got there, I was getting the dorm like ready or whatever. 
uh, or going to the dorm and so there was a note in my file saying I owed money because of um, whatever I didn't pay for the last semester of being there and I said I I was told I wasn't accepted early acceptance I was told I was just accepted in the fall like I'm here now and she said no you were accepted and I was like great well I, I said like Linda I was so angry so angry I didn't even I don't think I told anyone I don't remember if I told Mark or not I was dating Mark at the time maybe I said about the bill and then later I guess I had to go for I go home for some reason or other maybe it was a holiday and I said they told me I was accepted early acceptance to LSU and Chuck said well we didn't have the money anyway or something like that I'm like well your secretary to call me. All right, so we're going to talk about Gina Kirkland. Uh, freshman year, North Shore High School, Gina Kirkland, she had a friend or a boyfriend or something that kind of looked like Matt Benham, but not really. Maybe he's the curly-haired dude. His hair was curly, but I think it was like more wiry. I don't know. Uh, she said, I think, that her dad was a Navy, uh, excuse me, Army guy, and she usually lived at the Army uh, properties, I forget what they're called, for the military men and families. Uh, she has curly hair, fair skin. I think she's a little shorter than me, maybe a little taller. I don't remember. She's not quite my height. But she invited me over to spend the night one night, and I was over there, and we watched Gone with the Wind, the whole freaking movie. I hate that movie. It's so boring. It just goes on and on and on and on and on. So we watched the movie. Uh, she makes us this dinner that's like rice and cream of chicken soup. And I guess it tasted fine. I don't know. I don't remember a lot of the night after Gone with the Wind and eating. Um, so I think it was like a day or two later I started throwing up blood like bright red blood I almost went back to bed because I was like Ugh, I just want to go to bed I wasn't tired or anything I just didn't want to I didn't know if they would take me to the hospital I didn't know what happened so then I I threw up blood again and I'm like well I guess I better go tell Chuck and Tita but I go into their bedroom and they hop up and they're already dressed and um so I said I'm throwing up blood maybe we should go to, maybe we should take me to the doctor or something so they, they take me to the ER the ER doctor pumps my stomach he he said he didn't think I would make it through the night what did I eat and I'm like going I didn't really eat anything different the only different thing I ate was the night or two ago I guess with Gina and it was just can of soup mixed with rice I think everything else I've already it's just normal stuff that I eat at home um so they called it gastroenteritis I took some pill or something and uh was in the hospital forever it seems like they had some do a, a probe gastro probe I think it's called that gives you gas and takes forever they said they found the problem but a police officer came to the uh, the hospital and he, he asked me, that's when he asked me what, what did I eat differently or what do I think made me sick or something. I was like, I think I just said, well, I don't know. I, the only thing I ate different was what Gina made me. And he said something like, why would you want to involve your friend into this? And I'm going, what are you talking about? I just answered your question. I didn't, I'm not trying to involve anyone. I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with me. Blame the victim. It's ridiculous. But Chuck gives me this little stuffy doll, dog, I named him Bilbo, oh no, 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 you can't name him Bilbo, that's the worst, worst character in the whole book there, and I'm like going, oh, this name's Bilbo, sorry, and I like the book anyway, I can give a shit, so I left that for Chaz and Rada when I went to college, okay, the little stuffy, the little doggy stuffy, um, we're going to talk about the banks that I have been to. The first bank I went to, I don't remember what it was. It was in Slidell and it wasn't Whitney. I think maybe it was SunTrust. 
Don't know. And then when I went to LSU, it was Campus Federal Credit Union. Then after I graduated and Monty and I were married, I went to the SunTrust because that's where he said to go. <laughs> and that's where he went, I guess. Okay, so then I, when I moved to El Dorado, it was six months. It wasn't a year. Um, I transferred the bank to bank, uh, like first uh, Citizens Bank of El Dorado or something. Bank of El Dorado. First National Bank of El Dorado. Anyway. I had the, the ruby ring that Chuck gave me. It was sort of like in a heart with diamonds around it, but it wasn't like a full heart. It's, it's a gem. You can't really cut a heart. Not, not in the shape that, anyway, whatever. I put in a safety deposit box. I don't know what. It's gold. I didn't even like it. It's just probably the nicest thing you ever gave me. And then I ended up not being able to get it out because I, well, I don't know why. I just, anyway. So from El Dorado, I moved to uh, Atlanta with Aaron, and I got a job at Chili's and tried to open a bank account at Bank of America, but she said my credit wasn't good enough because of crap. So she gave me the information for NetBank, and I was at NetBank at first. Then Net, uh, Bank of America bought NetBank, so we got switched to Bank of America. So I was at Bank of America forever, except I went in like no less than 10 times, different branches, several times in each branch, trying to close that account. I had a, a checking account and a savings account, but the savings account never really got over 100 or so. So I just shut it down. Um, then it was Wood Forest Bank in Roswell because the, it's in the Walmart. It's right there. Why not? It was FDIC improved, approved, in, insured, and it's a bank. Except my debit card was invalid user coded. I didn't have a savings account, but sometimes when I put my ATM machine, like after a certain point, it would always pull up a safe, savings account. And then it became like one, two, or three regular accounts and a savings account, and I'm going, uh, I don't work here anymore because it says I'm whatever. So I don't have a bank account right now. I have like two or three, <sighs> who are those employee cards? One from Randstad, I think I still have McDonald's one. I guess one for HireQuest. All right, let me take a break. It's a little chilly here. 